Hi friends. Uh, we are discussing today a very important uh, topic uh, as part of uncertainty modeling uh, using fuzzy approach. Fuzzy approach uh, is uh, relatively new compared to our traditional statistics uh, where we are dealing with binary numbers 0 or 1. But then if you think about uh, the phenomena in life or engineering or science, they don't remain uh, as a crisp set of 0 or 1. And that is either they are there or they are not there. Um, there is always a degree of availability of each parameter into a set. So uh, like simple example, if I tell you I want a red apple. Now red apple may mean different thing to different body. So um, and uh, the person who has to take a decision, uh, he has to see, see or judge or make a perception in, in his mind what red means. So it, it can be, uh, the red can be characterized from 0 to 1 using fuzzy logic and uh, 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3. So it starts from 0 to 1 and then we can say this is 1 and this is, and then experts are told to uh, express their view on uh, how red or the apple uh, uh, for selection purpose, uh, then there is a better clarity and that has been attributed to uh, fuzzy logic. Uh, so in engineering also fuzzy logic is very useful and we will see how it is actually. So let us go, go into our outline what we are going to study. Fuzzy logic is more important when we talk about the operational domain. In operational domain, the linguistic exchange or the discussion or the exchange of ideas, uh, it takes form uh, to support various decision in operation and uh, its management. So, uh, so always we don't have a crisp data, uh, though there are many parameters which are coming to the plant, but finally for getting a holistic view of the uh, situation, we have to weigh those things in a fuzzy and imprecise languages. And uh, when when the experts are on the level of getting the perception right among themselves, then decision is taken. So operational ecosystem um, uh, is uh, based on uh, not always a fuzzy logic, but I would say uh, there can be imprecise component and there could be a decisive factor uh, in operational decisions. Um, second aspect, why in operation? Operation is human interaction intensive ecosystem. Because uh, even, uh, even in spite of having a lot of uh, automation and uh, you know uh, various complex machine, uh, their parameters are talking among themselves, computers and all that, um, we have that human element uh, which takes the final call, especially at the, during the time of emergency. Um, of course, during initial period of uh, let's say some uh, determined time, human uh, in a good system, you know, safety system, human is not uh, expected to take action, but later on some decisions are to be made and then human has to take. So uh, uh, for dealing with human reliability, the fuzzy systems um, are uh, very effective when data is not available or data is vague actually. So um, fuzzy logic provides an effective environment for modeling. Similarly, uh, interference theory. We know interference theory in uh, mm, structural engineering. We, when, when stress and strength, we saw in our previous lecture, when they overlap, there is a failure probability. So uh, in risk-based engineering, uh, this similar approach has been adopted for characterizing human reliability. Because we know uh, the operator stress level uh, and, uh, and we also know that the plant interface, main machine interface or human machine interface, um, if it is a uh, efficient interface, then the stress on the operator can be reduced. Uh, so it is called resilience level of the system itself, like whatever interface we have. Uh, that and the operator stress, these two together when they interface, uh, uh, decision making happens and the chances of uh, failures are less when the uh, machine or interface is excellent and uh, operator is excellent. So that's how it is and I think no better examples uh, would have been there than stress strength model for modeling the human reliability. 
Uh, and similarly, many performance shaping vectors, they are also designed using uh, this uh, uh, stress strength or we are saying operator stress and uh, system resilience uh, uh, properties. And then finally, overview and remarks will give. Um, uh, now, we have come to a level where we are deep into uncertainty modeling. Now here, we have to really uh, understand what is required for risk-based engineering or for risk assessment. Uh, so, uh, we can see decision making uh, takes place uh, during design, operation, regulation, aging and refurbishment. That means complete life cycle of the plant right from conceptualization of design to uh, refurbishment. Okay? Now, it is a vast uh, vast uh, in terms of uh, uh, knowledge, uh, in terms of uh, length, 100 years of operation. So, there are many uncertain variables. So, uh, uh, risk-based engineering always asserts that for if we want to be have a superior platform, then complete range of uh, our activities should be covered and there could be modif module for design, operation, uh, you know, regulation and all that. Now, in terms of scro scope, um, the, the spectrum should be wide enough uh, right from material characterization, uh, uncertainty, failure for, uh, uh, for engineering domain uh, which includes mechanical failure, electrical failure, electronics failure, even though all of them, they, they have their roots in material degradation and environmental stresses, but they happen in a, uh, like uh, life of electronics. Uh, can be maximum, uh, can be assumed to be uh, 10 years, 15 years. After that, it is, uh, it is the requirement of the time that the uh, electronics uh, should be replaced. Uh, but for mechanical component, it could be four, 40 years. But for civil component, it could be 100. So they have a different uh, uh, scope in terms of their operation and management. Now, uh, uh, here, right since beginning, our focus has been uh, safety critical systems because these are the systems they require more attention and risk-based engineering uh, uh, has been designed to ensure that uh, along with meeting the reliability targets uh, or operational targets, it should meet the risk level target also uh, because um, there is a uh, huge competition, uh, the energy systems have to compete with each other, so they should be less burdened and more effective in terms of safety, security and reliability. And the domain is of course safety, uh, our spectrum, earlier it was only safety, now security also has become part of it and now uh, risk uh, in respect of uh, safety or risk. Okay? So, so uh, we have been discussing about the epistemic uncertainty and uh, alienity uncertainty and probably this uh, representation will uh, as far as the practical purpose is concerned, it will provide, because you know, when the failure occurs, we do not know uh, at the outset, uh, till we do a root cause analysis, whether it is because of data or whether it is because of random nature. Okay, So, uh, instead of wasting time, uh, we what we do is, we start uh, looking at the parameters and we try to, uh, over a period of time, we try to reduce the uncertainty. So here you can see epistemic plus aleatory components, they were there and the, they, it, it could have been uh, one curve, second curve or third curve, uh, whichever dominates here in all. Uh, second thing, after fine tuning or updating of the knowledge and all that, the uncertainty levels have come down. So what was reducing is epistemic uncertainty. But actually aleatory uncertainty was remaining there only. So, with the experience, we move towards right, then we have one more epoch. Now, now our distributions have, uh, the uncertainty levels have come down. And eventually, what is coming down or getting uh, reduced is epistemic part. So, if nothing much can be done about uh, reducing uncertainty, what we have in our hand is aleatory component and we have to live with this component. Uh, for risk-based engineering, the probability bound is an accepted method, point number one. Um, in uh, risk assessment, we have an integrated statement of uncertainty. 
because when I calculate the upper bound or lower bound, I am not sure uh, which component is aleatory, which component is uh, epistemic. But over a period of time, I came to know it cannot be reduced further. So I accept that as an aleatory component, and I uh, I start um, framing my uh, framing my system or operation, whether it is operation or design. Now, one major feature of risk-based engineering is uh, because earlier we were in conservative domain. Now we are we are talking about. Uh, that you know you use quantified methods uh, to characterize uncertainty and probably implicit meaning is use the median value and all that. But then wherever we have a lot of data and distribution is very strong, uh, we can talk about the median value and all that, uh, whether it is stress or strength and all that. But when we are not sure about this, uh, then what we can do is we can use the 95 percent uh, 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 upper bound, you know, so that all the uncertainty is captured here, though the uh, outcome will be uh, conservative, but it will be less conservative than what we used to have uh, in traditional approach, uh, but it will be more than what we use uh, uh, when we consider mean value for our characterization of uncertainty in the system. Now, uh, I was mentioning here that uh, um, as far as the um, as far as the human uh, reliability is concerned, uh, the fuzzy provides an effective platform that is point number one and point number two is that our uh, stress strength inter stress and resi so i am instead of calling uh, this is this stress remains same but now now i am calling human stress and here system resilience this is ba basically systems strength uh, to uh, represent the best uh, in terms of safety to the operator so that operator uh, even if he is in the stress he does less error and if the system is such that system resilience and system, uh, human stress they are overlapping for a given situation then this area is called failure probability reason and this is nothing but a stress strength model that we have uh, implemented. So this is one thing. Then uh, due to lack of data. Uh, the human uh, factor and again I would say common cause failure, the uncertainty bounds are more. Okay? Sometimes uh, if you look at the database, it, it goes up to 10 also. That when we have uncertainty bound or error factor of 10, that means the data is not available to me. Um, up to 3 or 2 of error factor I can understand. So why not go for a fuzzy approach which gives us an effective platform when we use this, this model. Uh, so, what is the rationale in favor of fuzzy logic? Fuzzy approach has been found in improving HRA in general and uncertainty treatment in particular. Because it can convert from imprecise data to, uh, to quantitative data for more, uh, integrating with our system. So, as uncertainty is a function of incompleteness and fuzziness, uh, that can be modeled uh, using membership function. Or, so, here we have a membership function, we will we'll come to that part. Uh, fuzzy logic, the membership function is central to, uh, to the complete fuzzy approach. And the promise, what we have from fuzzy approach is, uh, fuzzy uh, HRA has been relatively new, but it has got a, in terms of growth, it is 1%, but given the, uh, the its availability or uh, its a promise, uh, I think there is an encouraging statement on this. So fuzzy approach for uncertainty characterization has got a huge promise and uh, we are, uh, our risk based approach is tending towards that only. Now uh, as I was mentioning in the beginning of this lecture that uh, zero 01 is a crisp logic but when we talk about the fuzzy uh, logic approach the membership function of zero to one. Um, is a um, important thing actually. So um, the um, when we don't have data uh, on certain thing, um, then uh, you are in a simulator environment and you are not able to collect much data. Then in that case, the confidence in the data, uh, uh, because the data uh, what we have is subjective opinion uh, on this thing. So here um, interfacing the uh, level of uh, resilience that is uh, strength and uh, stress uh, these two together uh, and of course uh, getting more and more insight on simulator uh, we can develop a very effective me mechanism 
uh, instead of being in the crisp logic failure success uh, and all that. Uh, in fuzzy logic, we have this membership function. Instead of 0 and 1, we have a range of value from 0, 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3. So it can be like this. Uh, the stress level is very low. Stress level is very high. And then we can accommodate in between. Stress level is medium. Stress level is, uh, it was very low. It is low. And then finally medium, then high and this thing and very high. Sub suppose if I want to say interface, uh, machine, main machine interface, uh, it, it is bad from starting or it is below average to average to this thing and it is quite possible because uh, in 0, 01 either interface is good or not. That, that is not a uh, very uh, acceptable argument but we can qualify it by words and if we qualify it by words uh, it could be imprecise. Uh, uh, so we can qualify by uh, words to uh, uh, fuzzy so you have the data which is uh, which is uh, linguistic so fuzzy uh, fuzzify and defuzzify and use those statements again in your analysis and there are many functions uh, triangular and trapezoidal functions are used more now let us see what are the fundamentals of fuzzy logic as i said a set there is a universal set in in which we draw some sample and we have this sample so x and mu a we characterize um, by some sample as x random variable it's a mean okay x is the uh, designation of uh, particular sample and mu a is the a uh, membership function of a and x belongs to a so how i characterize a is summation of i is equal to 1 to n mu a x i given for xi. So if I if I have 10 add for all those things and we uh, be, that becomes the characteristics uh, of the set A and that is how uh, we, we can characterize the fuzzy numbers. So uh, here mu A x1 is the membership uh, or the grade of the membership is the membership or grade of the membership it could be 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.1 so whatever and this is how we are able to express our opinion. So mu a x, uh, x belongs that is random variable is 0 to 1 where mu a x is uh, 1. Uh, so that means if it is a member uh, mu a x is 1 uh, totally in a mu a x 0 means it is not a member and uh, in between if you have then it is, a, is somewhere in between. So I think this is the in red what we have is a very powerful uh, algorithm for characterizing the human expression. Now, uh, we have this uh, major steps in fuzzy logic, okay, uh, identification of the stress and uh, this uh, resilience parameter, uh, collecting expert inputs, uh, conversion of input to fuzzy form, identify, identification of fuzzy function, whether it is a triangular or you know, trapezoidal or any other function, constructing the fuzzy membership function, evaluation of the centroid and centroid and defuzzification and resultant analysis. These steps you will see in this example. Uh, let us say uh, we have a problem uh, wherein operator stress level by, is characterized by an uh, expert for a given situation, stressful situation is high, okay? Obviously, if there is a scenario uh, which demand, uh, which is demanding for the operator stress level has to be high. It requires a knowledge based behavior or uh, a combination of knowledge based and rule based behavior. Okay? And when we talk about the uh, interface that is available, um, expert says it is excellent. Okay? Now, uh, given that this particular information is better captured by trapezoidal function and this two expression for uh, stress uh, for given question and resilience strength that is available and that is why we are able to and these two will tell probability of failure because we are looking for interfacing area. <coughs> now given a situation ideally speaking how uh, it is a trapezoidal function uh, membership function is given on the y axis. So uh, cognitive stress now we are qualifying the stress similarly we are characterizing the system resilience or system strength to address our uh, emergency issues in terms of an interface. 
So we can say it is uh, low, good, very good and excellent. That, that this, we are answering for system resilience. We have answered for, so four points we have captured here. Now, when these two interface, that means when the stress levels are high or sorry, very high in the range of very high, you can see here more than high and over very. So we come into region and system resilience also comes in the range of low, between low and very good. So that means there will be an interference. And this area represents the failure probability. So these two membership functions we have created for stress and resilience. We saw how they are overlapping. From there we got this overlapping area and we have the centroid and now for this particular triangle this is upper, lower bound and upper bound and this is important for this topic that means we are characterizing uncertainty lower bound and upper bound and it will have its own mem membership function okay but uh, now let's say if we uh, if if i say that my uh, system in a control room that i am trying to analyze the stresses are uh, high okay stresses are high but my control room interface is excellent why excellent because it has got um, uh, audio visual signals it has go, it has got an operator support system there it has got good automation build it doesn't allow uh, um, it doesn't expect human to perform during a special emergency then my system is excellent because after the transient is over uh, the stress level on the operator is expected to come down. So let us say either it is very good or good, the interface will not occur because this end high stress and they will not meet. But then if something happens which, uh, which, uh, which makes some of the subsystem fails and all that, it can turn from excellent to um, very good, good or low and then uh, within a moment the, the, there will be a overlap. So, um, the complete emergency procedure should be characterized for each event uh, right from transient to when actions are being taken to bring the plant to the normal situation. So a complete spectrum is there and one should look for where the, uh, it can switch from uh, <coughs> simple example I will give. By chance if control room there was no power supply even though control rooms are given um, class 3, class 2, class 1 all power supplies. So in emergency also there will not be, but yeah, suppose by chance it happens, so it will turn out to be a blackout type of situation and then the interface will, will no more be good and I think it is for the control room designer to take care of this aspect that these aspects should not creep into when we are handling an emergency scenario where stress levels are high. Now uh, we have understood the relevance of fuzzy, uh, fuzzy logic for risk based engineering, um, that is point number one. Uh, of course, uh, uh, it is a huge uh, inspiration we have drawn from uh, stress strength medal uh, and this has formed the basis for risk based engineering. Uh, not only, uh, so we can develop various performance shaping factors, performance shaping factor in terms of quality of interface, uh, quality of stress level and in terms of uh, decision making capability whether the action is um, knowledge based, rule based and in fact one more important point which risk based engineering um, uh, has proposed is one. Uh, in various human reliability approaches the, the knowledge based, uh, rule based and uh, uh, skill based, these three behaviors uh, it start with the skill based, uh, rule based and knowledge based. Okay? Um, so, uh, no, skill based means a routine, a routine operation, uh, you know, uh, rule based means you have to apply certain logic and then take a call. Knowledge based means uh, uh, at cognitive level you have to integrate so many parameters and take decision. So it is a part of the decision making. So it has been assumed that they are, uh, they are independent exclusive uh, phenomena. But in risk based engineering they are considered to be overlapping phenomena and that's why we had this uh, interfacing uh, stress strength model where interface uh, takes place. So, uh, there can be a job which requires a knowledge based behavior as well as rule based behavior. 
and I think um, uh, operation uh, ecosystem it calls for this and then turning a switch is again a skill based thing. So it, it, it calls for some uh, particular fraction from knowledge base, rule base and finally um, skill based. So um, in uh, risk based engineering it is overlapping model not as an exclusive independent uh, phenomena. Okay. So with this some references and you can have it. Thank you very much. Now next lecture will be on Bayesian updating and Monte Carlo simulation. These two techniques are uh, very important uh, for risk modeling. Thank you.